Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we are in what is going to be the future grow room. This is where we're gonna start all of our seedlings this year, but right now it's a catch-all and we need to transform the space into a place where boxes and things have just been dumped into a functional space. Currently, the way that I use this space mostly is we had our dehydrators in here and we have our freeze dryer in here. We're not gonna remove these, these are gonna stay in here, but what we need to get out is anything that's not related to a garden. I have seeds in my basement, I have all my gloves in my laundry room, I have all my seed starting equipment in a shed, and I want all of that in one spot. Cool thing about this room is there is a door right here, so we can have access to outside through this door. So when we need to harden off our seedlings, we can take them from in here to right out there. I was thinking about starting all my seeds in my basement, but I don't have water down there, and I thought that that is going to be an obstacle if I don't have access to water easily. This area is in my garage, and so I can just go into the kitchen and bring water to water our seedlings. This is what we're starting with. We have my husband's backup golf bag. I grabbed out the vacuum because I want to clean the floors. We have tables, boxes of stuff that have just been dumped here. What is soon going to turn into our grow station. We have seeds here, uh, a stove, random totes that I don't know what are in it. And so let's see how far we can get to transforming this room today. Another thing I'm gonna talk about today is we are gonna go over the seed haul that I got. This is for the first of two, excuse me, three seed orders I placed this year. This is from M.I. Gardener. I always start my seed shopping at M.I. Gardener because his seeds are really affordable and I like supporting his business because I've learned so much from him over the years through his YouTube channel. And he offered to sponsor today's video, which is awesome because I would be showing you a seed haul from him regardless of if he offered to sponsor a video or not. The other place I ordered a seed order through was through Johnny Seeds. Johnny Seeds is awesome because I can buy bulk seeds and I can buy pelleted seeds. Really, really small seeds you can buy pelleted and that just means they put a little clay coating over it so that you can pick them up easier and you can place them in the ground a lot easier and you don't have to then thin them once they germinate. So I like to buy pelleted carrot seeds and I can't get bulk seeds or pelleted seeds through and my gardener. And then I did place an order through rareseeds.com because there was a couple colors of a specific flower that I want to grow and I could only find them there. And I will link all the seed companies that I order from down in the description box. I do have a discount code for MI Gardener for 10% off plus free shipping if you order over $12. And who are we kidding here? It's pretty easy to spend over $12 on seeds. So the first thing I'm going to do today is start taking anything out of this room that doesn't belong in this room. As I remove things, I am going to take the time to put them away where they go inside. Or if I don't know where they go, I'm going to try to find a home for them or they're going to be donated. <laughs> Friends, this project ended up taking much more time than I anticipated. So if you're interested in the seed haul, I end up doing that in a separate video. What I wanted to focus on today was getting this room cleaned. This was the previous owner's wood shop. And so there was just a layer of dust and cobwebs on everything. And even though I'm gonna make this messy with dirt and seed starting, I kinda want it to be my own dirt. So I take today to really just get this place clean and organized. I am pretty proud of myself. Everything that I took out of this room, I found a proper home for it or I donated it. And that felt really good because sometimes when I do projects like this, it can just be easy to transfer the clutter from one space to another. But I was able to not only get this room under control, but I was able to not make another space in my house a disaster as well. So while we're organizing, I kind of want to talk about what I've learned when it comes to seed starting. I am no expert and I will not claim to be an expert, but this is my fourth year starting seeds indoors. And I have learned a few things from my failures over the last three years. And I'm excited to go into this fourth year and seeing if I can take what I've learned and apply it to this year. And hopefully I can be more successful, but you and I will find out together how well the seed starting goes this year for us. So the first year I started seeds, I purchased a lot of seeds 
but I just could not at that time financially afford to purchase grow lights. And so we had just bought our last homestead. It was the first year. And you know, when you buy a new home and we had built the garden, so we built the beds and we bought the soil and I bought all the seeds, but I just, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna attempt to try to start my seedlings inside without grow lights or a heat map. Well, that was a pretty epic fail. I had watched all the videos on starting seeds indoors and most people <laughs> say you need grow lights, but there were a few outliers that said you could start seeds indoors with just using light from a window. And so that's what I tried to do, but I at my last house did not have any south facing windows. The window that I had my seedlings in front of, there was a covered porch over it. And so they all germinated. Seeds will germinate mostly. Seeds will germinate without light, but they all got leggy and I ended up killing most of them. And they, I tried to transplant a few of them outside and when I transplanted them, they died. And it was, it was pretty much an epic fail, except I learned that the next year I was going to invest in grow lights. And I still use those grow lights. They were very affordable. Josh got them for me for Christmas, my second year gardening. I can link them down below because I still use them. They were from Amazon and they worked really well. It was a huge, huge upgrade from what I had before, which were no grow lights at all, but I did not invest in a heat mat. That year, it um, I did a little bit better than the year before but last year was definitely my best year starting seeds and I did invest in a heat mat and I also invested in a grow light um, timer so that I didn't have to take the time to every night and every morning to go in there and turn the lights on and turn the lights off. So that's basically what I've learned is that if you're going to start seeds indoors, it is really important to have grow lights and a heat mat for most things. When it comes to germinating seeds, I've definitely found that peppers and tomatoes and those really warm loving plants really enjoy having a heat mat when starting. But if you are gonna start things like kale and cabbage and things that are more cold loving, you can get away a lot easier with not having a heat mat to help germinate your seeds. So I am just, want to pass that along that you don't need to invest in really really expensive grow lights i now have two sets of grow lights i have one grow light that i got off amazon that was really affordable and then i do have a nicer set that i got last year and that did make a difference but i don't know if it made as big of a difference as if you're just starting out and you need to get some grow lights affordable ones will do the job and i'm just really <laughs> encouraged that we were able to get all of this layer of dust and dirt out of this grow room. And one thing we've been talking about doing in here is removing this carpet. This carpet is disgusting. Uh, I have spilled oil on it, but just when we moved in, this was a shop, you know? And so there's just stains and grossness. There's dead bugs, there's dusty, it's just, Ooh, and I'm gonna be starting seeds in here. Now this obviously is not gonna be long-term <laughs> seed starting. Long-term will probably be greenhouse, but that is not gonna happen this year. So we're working with what we got. And we know we wanna remove the carpet, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the carpet. I was not planning to do this today, but I was just thinking that, or Josh came in and we were talking, and we're like, we might as well just do it if we're gonna do it. And one reason why we weren't gonna do it is because it's the carpet's underneath this heavy 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 thing um, it's underneath this wood shelf so what i'm going to do is cut around it i've got a sharp knife here a box knife and i'm going to just cut the carpet well let's see if i can do it josh said that over in one corner he has already cut peeled up this carpet and he knows that it's just the concrete underneath it so we're going to see you just need to get a piece up so I can get some leverage. I probably should put a new... Oh yeah, just... It does look like they glued it down. Hmm. Maybe here, let's leave that there. Let's see. Josh said it was this corner that he started pulling up. You know what? There's glue on the floor so I don't know if I want it just to be all gluey stained on the floor so I think I'm gonna leave it 
we'll just clean it as best we can and we're gonna go back to our original plan we'll just clean this carpet as best we can and at some point whenever we finish this space out we'll, re we'll replace the flooring when we talk about gardening and seed starting, you're gonna hear a lot of people talk about hardiness zone. And what a hardiness zone is, is it's on average, how cold does your area get? So at my previous homestead, we were a zone 8B. I don't know what zone I'm in now because I'm such at a higher elevation, but I know that it is probably, I'm probably gonna assume I'm a zone 7A, but I'm not exactly sure. But all that tells me is on average, how cold does my area get? It doesn't tell me what my maximum temperature is. It doesn't tell me how much rain or precipitation you typically get. It doesn't tell you your first and last frost dates. All it tells you is on average, how cold does it get where you live? This is super important when you're talking about perennial plants, plants that are supposed to live over winter and come back year after year, because a plant, if it is not hardy to negative, you know, 10 degrees and you plant it, it's going to die, even though technically you think of a perennial as a plant coming back year after year. So a lot of people are surprised to find out that at our last house in Washington state, zone 8B, is the same as a lot of Texas. And that's just because where we live, it just doesn't get very cold. And so there's a lot of things to consider when starting seeds, not just your zone, but your climate, your first and last frost dates, your maximum temperature. And we'll talk about that a little bit more throughout the video. This is where we are now. I have taken everything out of here that I want out, but what I need to do now is clean the carpets back underneath where those shelves are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide all those shelves out into the garage. I did move my car so that we can go ahead and just move all those shelves right out here. I might not end up putting these two shelves back in there. We're just, well, maybe I'll buy more grow lights. I don't know, we'll see. I say that because I only have enough grow lights for two shelves, which I definitely could use more. So I'm gonna organize it, bring those shelves back in and reevaluate because I might be buying more grow lights. I didn't really think about that. Anyway. We, before I do the carpet, what I want to do is get the heat mat set up. What I'm thinking for the heat mat is putting it right on this table. I was thinking I needed to bring in a separate table for my heat mats, but I don't know why I was thinking that because I've got this amazing table right here. In the move, they clearly did not get wrapped up properly, so they need to be flattened out. I have some MDF here. These are old easels from painting. I'm just going to put these on here. I'm going to find some weight of some sort to weigh this down so we can flatten these out a bit. So like I was saying, a zone just talks about your average cold temperature in your area. And there are many, many things to consider when you're gardening. And one reason why it's hard to read a book or watch a video and then know everything about gardening is it's so climate specific or region specific and my climate here at this new homestead is very different than it was at my last homestead so i am learning i'm going to be learning a lot of new things based on that so a few other things to consider like i was saying is weather our climate first and last frost date and let's talk about how we know when our first and last frost dates are so that weight should help kind of get these heat mats to relax a little bit there are two tools that I use when it comes to knowing when I should start seeds. 
One of them is the Farmer's Almanac. I can link that down below. You put your zip code in and it's going to tell you for your area when your average first and last frost dates are. And you need to know that information so you can count backwards and you know when you should be starting seeds indoors. So if your first frost date is on April 1st and you need to start your pepper seeds six weeks before that, then you count backwards six weeks from April 1st. Another guide I like to use is the Clydesdale guide. It's a paper guide that you slide. I can link it down below as well. I'll show it in when we actually start some seeds, but it also is a very easy way to know when you should be starting seeds based on your first and last frost date. The only seeds that I'm going to be starting indoors are this year are peppers, tomatoes, cabbage. I haven't decided if I'm going to try to grow broccoli and cauliflower. If I do, I will start those inside. I am going to be starting a ton of flowers and a bunch of herbs, herbs that are kind of perennialized like sage, rosemary, thyme, those types of things. And going back to zone. So in my area, sage, rosemary, and thyme are perennials. They'll live through the winter, no problem. But I know that people in Alaska and my friends in Canada, where it is much, much colder in the winters, sage, rosemary, and thyme do not survive those cold temperatures. And so that's a good example of it's important to know your hardiness zone, because if you are going to plant something that could perennialize, you want to know how cold it's going to get and make sure that it doesn't, your efforts, <laughs> your plants that you plant don't die. Now, when you're considering building a grow room, there's a couple things to consider because it is an uh, initial investment and you need to invest in the grow setup, plus you need to invest in seeds, but it can be in the long run a whole lot cheaper to start seeds than it is to purchase seedlings. In my area, seedlings now plants at the big box stores are $4.98 they were last year, and that can be really expensive when I need you know, 80 tomato plants that adds up really, really quickly versus I can buy a seed packet with a hundred tomato seeds in it for two to $3. And so the grow lights will pay for itself when it comes to how many seed starts I need. I cannot believe how far we've come. It feels so much better, so much cleaner in here. Is it perfect? No, but I'm excited that I have this space to start seeds in. It's way better than starting seeds in my dining room and having my seedlings grow out in my living room on my carpet. So this is way, it's a huge upgrade. Way, way, way better. How this works is each one of the grow lights has a little plug that you can plug in. I haven't used these in a long time. I guess this one goes on the other side. I have to remember how to do this. It just goes on this side, so we got it. Okay, so that's plugged in to that, which then is going to plug into this. So we're gonna get this plugged in. One of the cool things about starting your own seeds and not relying on big box stores for starts is the variety of plants you can grow is way bigger. Where if you go to Home Depot to buy a tomato plant, they might have five or six different varieties to choose from versus the seed catalogs have hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tomato plants to choose from. I can't remember how to fully set this up. Josh set it up for me last year, so I'm gonna ask him to come in because when I plug this in, it's off, all the lights are off, but I will eventually have him set this to go on for 18 hours and then off for 12 hours. And then how I've hooked up these grow lights together is I have it, this white extension is gonna be plugged into the timer and this whole shelf here all of the grow lights are on this white extension cord. And then I have this one, this black cord, has these three plugs on it. And these three plugs are plugged to the black grow station here. 
So that way I can keep track that the white and silver go together, black and black go together, and all of them are gonna be on that one timer because they're all gonna be plugged into that one timer. Now that we have our grow room clean and set up, what I wanna do is go through my house and collect all my seeds that are all, well, most of my seeds are downstairs, but I have seeds in different places. I want all the seeds in one spot because that way I can keep track of them better. I wanna get all my seed starting stuff in here as well. And I wanna get any garden related stuff that's in my house in here. I don't need gloves in my laundry room. I want my gloves in here. So let's go collect the things around the house. I like to store my seeds in these photo organizers. I can link them down below where I got them. You can also get them at Michael's and craft stores. I think even Hobby Lobby sells them, but they're pretty fantastic because they fit a seed packet almost perfectly. I invested in those last year and they've been a huge game changer. So we got everything from the house. Now we gotta go get stuff from the shed, the seed starting stuff which I am not 100% sure where it is. I'm pretty sure it's out here in the shed. That was one of those things that I just don't exactly know where it was put in the move. Oh, here it is. Everything we need is right in this tote. I did a good job, I guess, organizing it when I was getting ready to move, which is incredible. Yay! Now that I have everything in here, I want to start organizing it and putting things in a its own place. So everything's going to have a home. I can't tell you how good this feels to get all of my gardening seed starting stuff in one spot instead of scattered throughout the house. So the first thing I'm thinking are these gloves. These are my favorite gloves. I love them because they're inexpensive and you can throw them in the wash. So the reason these were all in my laundry room is because they've all been washed. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is one drawer here is gonna be for clean gloves. And I'm just gonna throw these all in here. I love these gloves so much. And then this bottom, or the second drawer here, this is gonna be for dirty gloves. So when I use a pair of gloves and I have some dirty ones, I'll throw them in here. Once I have a handful of gloves that are dirty, I'll bring them in and I'll be able to wash them. And that way I can keep everything in here and just every so often when I need some clean gloves, I'll grab all the dirty ones, wash them, and then I'll bring them back, stick them in here. So that's one thing checked off the list. I did also bring in this shelf here that I had brought to the garage when we were cleaning the floors. I think I might get some grow lights for this, but time will tell depending on if I, if I need more grow space. I think I will need more grow space. So I just tucked it in that corner back there. I think for now, I'm gonna stick my seeds on this shelf here. These are my favorite way to organize seeds are these photo containers. They do need a little bit of organizing. I need to get in there and kind of go through them and organize them and do one more final inventory to see if I do need to order anything else other than what I've already ordered before the grow season. This bigger container, this is what I like to keep my bigger seeds in, things like beans and peas and corn, things where the seeds are themselves are bigger. I keep them in this because they don't fit well in the photo containers. So I love these. So this shelf is organized and I think I can take these things off and these mats have already flattened out a little bit. Because I want to put that stuff away if I can and I can just complete this project today. That's already a lot better. Once I put the seed trays on here, they'll lay it completely flat. This is the next thing I want to tackle. I want to put this, these trays in this spot along with, here's our vermiculite.
The rest of this in this tote needs to go back into the shed. We're keeping this because this is what we use to water our seedlings with. We've got our heat station going. I decided to put that back on there just to help weight it down and I'll just move it and get it nice and flat. Up here, I put our fertilizer that we're gonna use to fertilize our seedlings, our vermiculite to help prevent algae growth. I still need to buy cinnamon. We've got our trays, those are my favorite trays. They've lasted for four years. They're really cheap ones. I ended up tossing when we moved because they just were terrible. These I need to invest in some different ones, but some of them I'll be able to, these are the, I think these are 52 cells per tray, but I'm not sure. I do need to get some more because they're starting to show some serious signs of wear. These are on, this will be the fourth summer I'm using them. And then here I have some markers on, so I can mark what seedlings they are. I'm gonna to try to be better about that this year. This basket's empty for now. And then in here I put some pots. I like to recycle these and I'll use these when I up pot my seedlings. Here we just have some random tools. I need to put this back because this is my husband's. This I'm gonna put in the shed. Those are for that. If I need to, I wanna keep those in here. Sorry, that squeaky's awful. And then, and then in here we have our gloves and I'll put my dirty gloves in that bottom drawer. brought in here. I got two more of these bags. So what this is, is Vermont compost. This is what I'm going to be starting all my seedlings in this year. I really enjoy watching Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. She starts all of her seedlings with Vermont compost. So consider me influenced. I am going to attempt that this year. I have started my seedlings with ProMix. Eh, it was okay. I feel like the soil doesn't have enough nutrients and I would continually have to fertilize them a ton. I will fertilize them with this as well, but it just seemed like this, it was dead, which it, it is because it's seed starting mix. But I'm, I'm going to try this and see if I can get better, a better, stronger looking plant with it. So I'm really excited that I ordered this. I can link it down below if you're interested. And then I'm going to use this tub when I go to start my seedlings. I'll rip open a bag, I'll dump it in here, and I'll use this as my soil container. I do need to probably order more of this. I, I ordered four bags, and they're 20 quarts each, but I'm going to wait a little bit. But if you want this, just know I bought this off Amazon. Last year you couldn't buy it on Amazon, that's why I didn't use it. But you can now, but it takes, I think it took like eight or nine days to get it. So it wasn't on Prime. I have to say I am very proud of myself. Not only did we get this room organized and put together, I put away any of the stuff that was in here that needed to be find new homes. <coughs> Still pretty dusty in here. I did have both of the garage door open and this door open to get some cross breeze and help like air this place out a little bit. I think just from the sweeping and getting all that dust up. But overall, I have to say it feels a lot cleaner in here, which is fantastic, especially because I do freeze drying and dehydrating in here. It's good that it is feeling cleaner in here, but look how fantastic this looks. I'm just thrilled with the progress. Now, one thing I didn't show you is that this is now the freeze dryer accessory shelf. So we have our extra oil, our sealer, our Mylar bags right here, and then our seeds and are obviously our grow lights, an extra shelf. And what I think I might do, I might bring a table in and put a table in the middle here for seed starting to actually, you know, fill the trays with soil, be able to put the seeds in, and then I can transfer them to the heat mat. Or I might get rid of one of those heat mats off there and just have one heat mat out and have half of that table for seed starting and then the other half for seed germination. I'm not exactly sure yet what I'm going to do. Give me your thoughts or your opinions on that and that would be fantastic. I was going to do the seed haul in the end of this video but I don't know if everyone is interested in a seed haul so what I think I'm going to do is end this here and I'm going to film a seed haul and it's going to be its own video just so that the people that really want to watch the seed haul can watch it and the people who don't want to watch it can choose not to watch it but I will link 
where I buy the seeds, my grow lights, and all the things, the seed organizers, which is fantastic. I'm excited that I have all of that up here. And I'm just grateful that it is seed starting time here pretty soon. I was gonna start some peppers today as well. I think I'm gonna wait another week and a half. I just looked up my new um, zone and frost state and all of that stuff. I'll get more into that later on. But if I start now, I'm starting a little bit early and I don't wanna start too early. Last year I started a little too late, but the year before I started too early <laughs> and it is very hard to try to keep little plants alive indoors longer than necessary. So I'm gonna wait about a week probably before I start any peppers. But I'm just so grateful for you for being here that it's growing season around the corner. And thank you for taking time to spend time with me. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.